Happy Halloween, everyone. Since I am giving you the option over the trick and or the treats this year, I will start, of course, with the trick and talk about one of several Halloween theme films which is celebrating a milestone this on this year and one of several from um, Disney I've been talking about with the list from Disney Plus Hole. So here's a double feature feature on the nineteen ninety three cult classic Hocus Pocus and its twenty twenty two sequel for Disney Plus. While the first film home wasn't a complete heat flop as some people have claimed even though I will admit it did not exactly do the numbers that were expected at the time. Opening number four went on so winning weekend in 1993 behind Jurassic Park in the line of fire and The Firm. All films are also celebrating 30th anniversaries this year and all quite entertaining on rights. And while well, Cortical Reception and initially wasn't the most favorable. It's since undergone some of evaluation and and likewise, my own point of view has shifted on the film. I used to but not particularly care for it, though I've reached a stage in my life where I definitely understand the appeal and why it's shown almost daily on on TV networks that the mouse host has a stake in and 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 eventually led to a full-blown legacy sequel all in this time period with a third installment in the wane so let's begin the first film home has a prologue in the year 1693 fittingly in salem massachusetts which had provides a pretext what happened with three which is known as the sanderson sisters winifred or winnie for short hurt play of Bette Midler, Sarah, the youngest, is played by Sarah Jessica Parker, and Mary, the middle child, played by Kathy Najimi, he, they end up sacrificing in, in a young woman named Ellen Lee Banks, played by Amanda Shepard, heard, which outrages is his brother her brother Thackeray played by Sean Murray though they end up turning into a cat because they got caught on and before their hum from the gallows they cast a spell ensuring that that even though their bodies may die their souls will live on. So, right off the bat, it was something strange. Interesting in hindsight that the mouse thought Night Before Christmas would be a risky move, who even the point of releasing that under their Touchstone Pictures banner, basically what they had before, now are they bought Fox, Spain, that kind of fair. But that's become something a pop culture phenom, even the point of being featured in Kingdom Hearts games, I mean, recurrently. So, and then we got this. So let's continue. 300 years pass, and I must say, the sequences in the then present day have a similar effect for this demographic that Scream would for older ones later in a decade of basically deliberately pegging it for her then and now. Uh, so, anyone watching it in 30 years, here's will know exactly when it came out. Especially the way people are dressed, the way people have their haircuts. Hut and especially like a lot of the attitudes they have I mean not just like the children but also their parents I mean which with Max Dennison play Omri Katz who is transitioning from moving to Salem from LA and Thor Birch as his younger sister Danny short for Danielle in fact I think this was she was very, so young then I mean and even though I know she hasn't been in every single all the best films I've ever seen she does have a tendency to tend to be pretty entertaining and 
I definitely understand why I, she was able to make the transition to independent films after this. I mean, I especially liked her in the film version of Ghost World. I mean, though all is not well, admittedly, on Halloween night, right? Though Max would like to who be getting familiar with his classmate Allison, and played by Vanessa Shaw. Uh, he deals with not only his eccentric parents, Dave, played by the late Charles Rocket, and his mother, Jenny, played by Stephanie Ferrissey, but also some hoods who are so 90s they would have expected a cross for Axel Stone. Own Jay, played by Tobias Jelinek, and Larry, and also Ernie, aka Ice, played by Larry Bagby. He, after they try and take his, his, his Nike boots, they, they later attempt to cross paths with the witches, as after also stealing Danny's candy and knocking her some pumpkins. Spoilers, it does not go well. Apparently, mm. the true inciting incident does not really happen until oh, near the end of the first act, act and the start of the second, so about a half hour or so in, and in which they visit the Uncle Saracen place, and, and Max, Max lights the candle that was contains their souls, and, of course... In order to make their resurrection permanent, they need a, and I'm not making this up, a version sacrifice. This, like I said, I don't really, I'm not really as down this movie as it used to be, but it is a really very strange movie. Because that's basically the plot. Three witches rise from the dead, and, and they want a version sacrifice to make their resurrection permanent. Of course. Mm hmm. That's a plot you would expect to have like an old screen horror film um, rather than a PGA Disney movie. So I can understand why not everyone was on board at the time, but Bounce Island's at home. Still, oh, there is, is an admitted appeal to this film, and I'll admit the performances of the three main witches are an acquired taste. I mean, I wouldn't say they've gone so as to make the same kind of pop culture impact that Jack Skellington and Sally have, but if Jack is a pumpkin king and Sally play his, his queen, then they are definitely the most unconventional princesses that Disney has ever had in their wheelhouse. I will say they are quite good singers, especially how Bette Midler has had a background in both stage and film, as well as the music is quite extensive. And both Sarah Jessica Parker and Kate and the Jimmy are quite capable as well. And for all the moments of, mmm, that's good hand they embark in in this film, I will admit that from the perspective of like a younger viewer and someone watching this now do this video, you know, that Sarah's siren song to try and bewitch the children and their parents is immediately genuinely unsettling if you think about it. Yeah. Particularly like Camille and like actor Doug Jones as the body dumble for or or Billy Butcherson who used to date Winifred had in the seventeenth century before he was poisoned and when he loses his head, quite literally Kara Malkus is the other body double, I mean. Oh. And it turns out other people in this film are no longer with us are her Gary and Penny Marshall, all actors and filmmakers who have also made quite the impact on many. And even when things seem bleak, they are. We do, of course, get a happy ending at the graveyard as the witches return to the deaths once they came, and in the process, Thackeray and his sister, her 
can finally rest in peace. He's at least for another 29 years. So, with the film not doing spectacularly in theaters, theaters but definitely finding its audience over time on TV and at home, um, a legacy sequel was finally released on Disney Plus last, last year. And I'm just now getting around to watching it and talking about it because I thought that would probably be the best way to do this. To watch both movies at the same time and do them in one video. Oh. And this time the prologue also fleshes out what led to the stands between witches is and their eventual exile and why this like the other normal folk in Salem. They were given the book that was in both films by the Mother Witch, played by Hannah Wardingham. Um, and yes, it is essentially a PG-rated Necronomicon, um, more or less. And on top of, of the three main witches reprising their roles from the first film, because who else would it be? And Jones reprising his role as Billy Butcherson. We do get a host of new young talent, and, and playing this one as per his tradition and leg many legacy sequels, being a a aspiring witch named Becca, play a Whitney Peak, her best friend Izzy, he played by Belissa Escobedo, apologies pronunciation, and the mayor's daughter Cassie by Lila Buckingham, who used to be friends with Becca and Izzy before her, their, her, her popularity caused them to have a falling out. And not how by founders is her, her boyfriend Mike, but by Freud Gutierrez, who is charitably a bit of a dunce. I mean, like, use a dictionary spelling who is he mm. i must say as a legacy sequel that's one of the offerings on their streaming service in the halloween collection does a good job at not only honoring the impact of the, the original but also getting that impact into the story that that apparently the sanderson's have fans of their own now now of any orientation so to speak that's they make they do indeed have cosplayers of all shapes, size, and hue as them. The same reason why I in this DIY Pokemon trainer veteran outfits, it's or many people dressing up as variants of Spider-Man as well. And yes, their rendition of Blondes One Way or Another is every bit as enrapturing as their her cover of I'll Put a Spell on You. And I also kinda like how how they adjust to society in the new age, much as they did in the 90s back in the original film. Um, like, having like a hoverboard and they were one of their brooms, I mean... Now, I do admit I have to wonder how much Walgreens paid to get in the movie over Raid Aid, who isn't doing so hot. Good ice cream, though. On that. And while they do indeed return to the Earth from once they came once again, and a third film is in early development as I record this, as barring any potential hold up to the SAG after strikes. I mean, this one was also being worked on as everything started happening in, in 2020. But hey, it would not be the first, shall we say, plague that some witches have lived through by any means. Mm. Oh. As you can imagine, while these movies may be very, very strange, culty witchery, my Joe, it is your strange, culty witchery, so I can definitely understand why a lot of you all enjoy it. And tomorrow will be the treat portion of this month, as I talk about films that have an impact on me, and next Halloween to the Disney Plus hole, that's also Nostalgia Grave. So I won't see what they are though, so they'll be off for now, so happy Halloween everyone. Hmm.